Okay, what's up, world? Uh, today we have a little bit of a treat. We're interviewing Stephen Van, uh, photo taker, photographer, extraordinaire, graphic designer, extraordinaire, part of the How to Rap universe. I wanted to reach out to him because I, uh, number one, his pictures and his video work is incredible. I'm subscribed as you should to Stephen Van on YouTube, and he's, you know, he's just a, a dope dude, uh, up and coming graphic artist. What's up, Steve? Hey, man. Uh happy to be on here uh thanks for bringing me on yeah yeah man so um just kind of starting off why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and also how did you find how to rap which i actually don't know at all um so basically i'm a graphic designer you know photographer videographer R really i do anything visual uh because i like to create that sort of stuff so um i really i just started a, i just started a youtube channel in 2015 uh, so that I had an outlet, you know, to create stuff because I really didn't like I was a creative person, but I didn't really have anywhere to, you know, put my stuff out there, you know, and then it grew to about 85,000 subscribers. Like I'm at 85k right now. And uh, basically I make tutorials, that sort of stuff to teach other people what I do. Basically, uh, I do photo shoots, video shoots, that sort of stuff. But my channel is really there to help other people, uh, so similar to yours. And yeah, so, uh, that's what I do. And I found um your stuff i think from a suggested video uh because i am like interested and i do watch like hip-hop videos you rap videos like music related videos so i think it probably popped up um in a suggested video somewhere on the home page i'm not really sure exactly but um it's a like it, there's a big possibility that i was gonna you know somehow end up on your video you know sometime um if i didn't end up right like when i did because uh, i'm really into music as well um so yeah sweet i got yeah. all right well that's dope because uh, a lot of the stuff as you can imagine we'll talk about here is sort of i'm a up-and-coming artist and i want to look professional on my social media and all those kind of things and i just wanted to pick your brain a little bit in this interview for all the people watching um about how to go from blurry unfocused uh, poorly framed photos to at least a, a basic blueprint. Uh, one thing I've noticed just off the break is all of your stuff um, is very well color corrected. Uh, you know, you, you know everything about framing. And these are things that rappers don't seem to talk enough about. Um, I, I don't know if they think it's nerdy or what the deal is, um, but it's, it's something really important, you know? Yeah, I definitely think um, if you're any sort of person, like if you're trying to sell anything, if you're trying to do anything your brand is your image like your brand is everything like how you you're perceived how you look so uh if you're like an upcoming artist you have to have good visuals you have to look good you know um because that's what people see so how i kind of learned it was uh i think a lot of people try to when they begin they start to overdo stuff so they overdo editing they overdo stuff um they try to like because when you start you don't really have the equipment that somebody who's been doing it for a while who save up for that equipment you know can do and um you don't know as much as them so i think when you start out you should really start with the basics and uh when, once you you know are set with the basics then you keep going and going uh, but really sm uh, small steps because i think a lot of people like to take leaps and try to do something that they probably can at the moment um so things like like taking pictures and stuff like that just have a simple you know straight on shot like you don't have to you know, mess with angles all that much and i think a great way to learn is um just going on shoots or like uh, hitting up a photographer or videographer you know to have a shoot and just see how they do stuff uh, and pick their brain as well um and youtube is a great resource um i learned basically like probably 80 90 percent of the stuff i know off of videos um and other people so um that's what i did when i started out I would watch YouTube videos and I would go on shoots with people and just shadow them, see what they're doing. Um, and yeah. Okay. So stepping back a little bit, you mentioned like hitting up photographers. How do I, as a rapper hit up a photographer, um, in a way that, that, that would be of interest to them? Um, also, so one, like, how do I approach this photographer? And also what's a good price point? Cause I know a lot of people are like, well, I want a photo shoot, but they probably have no idea you know, what he's going to charge or if you can finesse them, any of the, <laughs> any of that. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of, I think college and university students who are in, um, photography, film, that sort of stuff. And they'll be willing to do for free just because 
they need some sort of content for their portfolio similar to how you need you know stuff so i think if you have the exchange um you know you get pictures that you need and they get pictures for their portfolio that would work um there's a bunch on instagram like i get uh hit up sometimes too uh because like besides ha like being a photographer like i'm like i'm like sort of a public figure in like where i am just because um i have big social media following right i get hit up by photographers a lot and uh usually they'll be willing to do stuff for free uh if you do want to pay for something um usually th the proper photographers who like have big experience um usually already have rates listed somewhere uh, somewhere or you can just ask them um I, and those photographers will probably never really uh like the price is firm so um you can't really finesse them out of anything but there's a lot of college and university students who need um you know stuff for their portfolio and they're not bad like they've been practicing it for you know a couple years um and they're still learning and they need the stuff as much as you do so i think hitting up you know um you know 20 year olds you know 19 year olds you know s somebody who needs something for their portfolio that be you know the best like there's a bunch of stuff on like there's a bunch of gigs on craigslist from uh photographers who are willing to shoot for a cheaper price like you can literally search out like student photographer student videographer and get a cheaper price because those people need content and they're you know trying to make a couple of dollars you know here and there um so um, yeah um, that's because i've been doing i i used to do that as well i used to hit up um artists and stuff like that so i could get stuff for my um, portfolio so that's just based off experience oh yeah and so um what as far as these photographers when you hit them up i get the impression that they already have uh cameras ready to go like yeah. So they would already have uh, a DSLR and like and all that. And with their gig or what they'll do for you, will they do color correction after as well, or how does that work? Uh, usually they would because um, they want the the photos and the video to end up on their website on their portfolio. So I'm assuming they would want to you know edit the photo in a way that represents them. So uh, usually they would do that and take care of that because. Um, it looks much better as a final result for both of the parties, right? So, yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's step back a little bit because I, I just use the word like DSLR and things like that. So let's let's just kind of uh, go over a little bit of those things. So could you, in the best of your ability, give maybe like the three tiers of uh, photography that you use um, for the layman, like the difference between a, a Galaxy photo and a DSLR and a you know epic or something i feel like um if you want to take just like you can take really good pictures with like an iphone like a you know a high budget smartphone right so mm. i think the baseline should be like a high budget smartphone i i don't i don't think um it's smart to take a picture on like something that's super grainy and like the best lighting like baseline at least a, a good phone and then um, there's like point and shoot cameras, like the smaller ones, travel cameras. Those are uh, just as good as like um, that, uh, you know, like phone cameras and stuff like that. And then moving from there, there are a couple of good DSLR cameras around like $400, $500 that will take good pictures. Uh, I started off with that. And then after that, there's a big jump from $500 to like $1,000, $2,000. Around the $1,000 mark is what's considered like... Um, a mid-range priced camera and those are like pretty good i'm using something i'm only i'm using i started off with a camera that was like 700 dollars um and then i spent like a year using that and right now i'm using a camera that's around a thousand dollars and my photos are probably better than many that have much more expensive cameras i think a lot of people you hit up will probably have like a three thousand four thousand dollar camera uh, those are people who even students are, st there are a lot of students who spend a lot of money on that sort of stuff so mm. um i like a, a lot of people have much better equipment than me i think i just use it better um but there are definitely students who literally all they invest in is equipment so i would hit up a student just because they have equipment they have experience and they're willing to do it for free or a cheap price 
So yeah. Do you um do you think that it's important for a rapper to spend the time or an artist to spend the time to even learn some of this, or would you say just go straight for the students? Don't even waste your time. You know, because I'm kind of self-taught as a all the YouTube all the how to rap stuff. Uh, I do myself uh, as of the taping of this and I do watch your videos and I, I've started to tag you when I did it to be like, yeah, yeah, I got that from you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important for an artist because I like to actually try to see what the photographer videographer is doing, you know, put in ideas, stuff like that, because, um, the end result is going to be for them, right? Like the image is going to be for them. So if you, um, you want to have a say in what you're actually you know, putting out there, right? Because uh, you, you kind of want to know because you understand yourself better and you understand like how it could work for your brand. Because like, on, like honestly, um, I see a lot of people who kind of just, like I know a lot of artists who will just hire a bunch of people, they get the photos back, but the photos or the visuals and that sort of stuff doesn't match with their brand, doesn't match with how they are, right? So I think when you're in tune with everybody on the team, you know them well, um, you learn about it yourself. You can direct people to do certain things that, you know, fit the way you're thinking of, because, um, what you're thinking and what your photographer, what your director is thinking is going to be different. Um, so I think if you, you know, what they're doing, you, you kind of have a better understanding, uh, and you can make things work that way. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's about uh it, yeah. So you would say that it's worth an artist's time to at least learn what things like uh, basic framing of a photo. I know in our in our social media program we talk about like rule of thirds. Uh, we talk about um, like we go through like brightness, contrast, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I think it's more important like the concept of the photo, the concept of things like uh, how they're gonna the end results gonna look like framing and stuff. I think the photographer you know, is like gonna kind of determine that. But I think the concept of it, like um, maybe a certain pose that will look better, that will fit better with a certain theme. So like a theme of a shoot, like, a, you know, a concept of a shoot, I think that's more important than the actual, like smaller things, like um, the lighting and that sort of stuff. I think uh, the concept and like the overall theme of the, the you know, the visuals is more important. Okay, so uh, talking about theming a little bit, what what about uh, fonts and things like that? So in, we have another module in our product where we talk about sans serif versus serif, and I kind of comment, I'm like, you know, you should kind of try to avoid uh, serif uh, type fonts and things like that usually. Um, what is your experience with fonts? How important do you think it is, uh, even particularly with artists? Um, I think it's important, like, uh, fonts is like a very small thing, but usually like in music videos and that sor sort of stuff, um, you know, like I, I don't really know what to say about it, but like I, the only time you really see fonts and in, in that stuff involved is with cover art and music videos. Um, I think on, I, I think there's a lot of, um, artists who have visuals that like have some whack font or something like that. I think mm. keeping it very simple, clean, uh, is probably the best way to go. Uh, cause like, obviously you want your, your brand to look like that, the clean, you know, look good. Uh, but it really, it's, it's up to like your brand. Like some people have a very like, you know, colorful, you know, happy sort of brand, you know? Mm. <laughs> and so the fonts will be different and stuff like that. I, I guess if it matches with, uh, your other stuff, then it's fine. Like your, your like music videos and your, your music and your cover arts, they should all have the same like theme. I, I would think like the same image, like the same sort of, you know, so I, I guess whatever fits really. What, um, can you talk a little bit about, um, basic things in, for example, Instagram that people could do to improve a picture. So like, like, uh, even with the filter, like the self manual filter, uh, brightness, contrast, like highlights, like how would somebody who's just a layman manipulate their even in built in Instagram filter? Okay. Well, I wouldn't recommend really using the built in Instagram, uh, because the filters are like very strong and they're very, like, they're very different. I think there's like other apps like Voss, GoCam or Snapseed. Like there's a bunch of free, uh, editing apps that are good. Uh, if you're trying to edit photos, like 
and you want them to look really good, I recommend getting like Adobe Lightroom or something like that uh, because you can really mess with it a little bit more. But I think the most important part of the uh, image is probably the lighting. You can get a really good uh, photo with like even a phone uh, if the lighting is good. Uh, just make sure that the lighting is always in front of you, not behind you, or else your face is going to be dark and then the background is going to be bright. I see that a lot with um, a lot of shoots and stuff like that. But as for like editing and that sort of stuff, I guess, you know, if you can just make it, uh, just don't edit, like over edit. I feel like that's a big problem. You wanted to make it look cool and that sort of stuff. So they over edit. I think just basic adjustments, like increasing the brightness, like a little bit, the contrast a little bit, like don't make such big edits. And if you're using a filter and that sort of stuff, make sure that it doesn't change the image so much because sometimes when you change up an image and you think it looks good, you use a filter, it probably looks whack because um, you're comparing it to the original image and it doesn't look, you know, the same as the original image. So just don't over edit, don't overdo things. I think keep it simple. What um kind of like, just imagine that I'm an artist that doesn't really know anything. Can you explain a little bit about like pixels and like how important they are? um what's a good met like somebody asked even in the live or we're trying to get it like what's a big good megapixel rate and all that kind of stuff i mean uh nowadays it's like megapixels don't matter as much as like the camera sensor so uh i wouldn't really look deep into specifications and that sort of stuff um you can literally search up on youtube like if you're looking for a camera or like some you know you're looking for something you can just search on youtube like best budget camera best budget you know um don't focus so much on the specifications but i would really look at reviews instead because specifications can be deceiving uh because you know there's like a like a nokia phone or like a microsoft phone that has like 50 megapixels but the camera isn't the best on the market right so i and like the iphone camera sensor is like very good like um so i think the camera sensor matters a lot more but definitely don't get caught up in the spec specs and stuff just look at reviews I, I think that's much better because people have used cameras and that sort of stuff and they know what they're talking about like if you ask like a guy at best buy he's probably just gonna tell you it's good because <laughs> he's trying to sell stuff to you right so reviews on youtube very helpful um and yeah that's good. Uh yeah one thing of one more thing about lighting i mean is that twilight hour kind of stereotype true about like you should shoot b like at sunset yeah sunset and sunrise and all that uh sun yeah i think the reason why is because during those times um there's sort of a orange and teal look to it because the sunrise and kind of the sky gets darker like tealish color um that's why in a lot of films they kind of make it look orange and teal that's why a lot of you know stuff is orange and teal so like during sunset and sunrise those are the kind of two perfect colors because they complement each other like they're opposite on the color wheel stuff like that um they just complement each other very well so also in like the winter uh like i prefer to shoot in the winter because um during the day it's like kind of naturally like that um because it's like sort of darker it gets darker earlier um so in the winter it's sort of already that that feel Mm -hmm. but um during every other time of the year you just really have to wait till like sunset sunrise and those are probably when the best photos turn out because the sun is like you know setting and you know it looks nice orange blue you know so yeah definitely uh that's mm -hmm. why in a lot of films it's like that what um if what are like uh, some like common things that you see that's an issue for maybe an artist you said you're a rap fan uh when you look at their instagram like what are some turnoffs uh possible turnoffs for you as a photographer or possible turnoffs even for like a lay fan about photography they may not just even know like oh that looks bad i think okay for insta like just in general the content a lot of artists are posting are isn't relevant to their music their brand like they'll post like a, just like a random photo that has nothing to do with them. Uh, I think you have to keep everything on your social media, all the content consistent because people are going to see it. And also, um, I guess like there's pictures where artists will post that really are like really bad, but for some reason they still post it. I think you want to keep your, all your content really high quality. 
Uh, obviously, you still want to post, you know, consistently and that sort of stuff, but don't tarnish your, your brand, your, your value for like one photo. Like um, a lot of artists will do that and they'll just post like non-relevant content. Mm, mm. And, and like, I would assume like poor lighting even and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, poor lighting. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A so, lot of, yeah. Do you think it's how crucial is it to shoot outside as opposed to shooting inside? I mean, we talked a little bit about Twilight Hour, um, but is it worth it to like wait for that outdoor video or or outdoor um, picture? It depends on the, you know, like what you're trying to get for, like uh, go for it, right? Um, I think inside is just as good if the lighting is just as good. I I think people like to go outside because you don't really have to, you know, set up lighting and that sort of stuff. You don't even have to like buy lights buy you know backdrop stuff like that like the lighting is natural and it's there and it's free right and uh, there's a lot of sp more space to work with outside I, I i think that's why a lot of people like going outside more but like inside's great too if you have good lighting if you have good lighting you can take a good photo so yeah what uh okay so just a couple other topics that i'm sure people are curious about um music videos i mean do you have a you have experience with that right like i, I think i've seen some trainings on your channel about that um, yeah. everyone should be sure to follow him of course steven van on youtube i get the impression when I, when I talk to people, I'm always like, you have to understand a music video is a very long, slow process. So there has to be, you have to be patient. Uh, it's not going to be like the big party you might think it is. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of uh, shooting a music video, what it feels like, what the artist should expect? Shooting music video is a very long process because you want, because every shot in that matters. Um, it's not like a vlog on YouTube where it's sort of just what's going on. You're, you're, in that process and vlogging and that sort of stuff, you're documenting what's happen happening, right? In in a music video, you're actually creating stuff. So you have to like lay out like the storyboard, like what each scene, each specific scene, you know, what settings to use for each specific scene, what's the artist gonna do in each specific scene. And even the small details, like who's gonna be in the background? Is there gonna be anybody in the background? Like where each, you know, location is gonna be. And usually it's about timing. So um, usually people will, need like they'll have to wait a couple hours to sunset or a certain time of the day or where a location is empty right um in order to do stuff so uh, sometimes the timing isn't right uh like there was a time where we were at one place um and we had to go like two hours to this other place uh near a, like a waterfall um in time for sunset but we weren't able to make it and so we had to delay the process till the next day um, and sometimes, you know, the extras aren't available. Sometimes, you know, the director isn't available, like the scheduling, the timing is all very hard and just the very s small details, um, and that sort of stuff. And it's just hard getting people together and, you know, setting everything up, setting everything up is very hard because the lighting matters, the sound matters, like everything matters and hiring, you know, people for like extras and stuff sort of, and all that sort of stuff will take a lot of time um so it's Does definitely that, a long process yeah you mentioned yeah, uh, student photographers earlier uh do you think that's a good route as well for music video uh like directors and stuff if you're going for a uh, music video like don't go for a photographer because they're like photo and video like video is much harder than photo uh because it's moving it's ongoing there's story to it and stuff like that so just don't go go to a, a photographer, student photographer, go for a videographer. But if you find a good videographer who's a student and he's willing to do it, definitely go for it. Like they won't probably have the highest budget, but if you're fine with like a, a video that will, you know, be kind of like, it, like when you're working with a student, it's less stress sort of, cause you don't have to worry about other stuff because your budget's low down to worry about hiring people and all that sort of stuff. So it's sort of easier to work with a student just because they pick a location and they just shoot there. And then everything else, you know, is whatever, right? And you can meet up with them anytime, stuff like that. With other people, with the whole team, um, it's harder to get everybody together because everybody has different schedules. Hmm. So you might want to take an L as far as like craziness of video for at least having that free student <laughs> it's like a yeah. budget versus art right yeah yeah okay well um 
Yeah, those are the kind of the main things I wanted to talk about. It sounds like uh, we've we've taken out of this that it's you can get a free photo shoot best by a student. Um, yeah. You can, you know, I, is there is there a budget? like a number that somebody could offer like because i know people will come into this and want to be like well i know i can get a student but if i can't what what should i be investing in my graphic art um for photo are you talking about graphic like, art or like photo like what do you mean like sorry like a photo shoot mm -hmm. a photo shoot i think uh a cheap rate is probably like 40 50 dollars for how like many that. photos for, for like just uh like a two hour photo shoot something like that you and know, like I'm not, sh I'm not sure how many photos, but around that time, just like an hour or two hours, like fifty dollars around, like sixty, is like a decent rate. Like it's a good rate. Okay. All right. So uh, that's the way you get photos on music videos. You should be ready for this to be a long process, and there's you'll probably need a team, but that can be uh, stressful. Um, yeah. And cut. You said Lightroom. I know that I, I have the Adobe. Uh, sort of cc or whatever and that's like 20 dollars a month uh for student rate so anybody who's yeah. watching like i would say invest in that that'll give you video editing as far as premiere pro which is like one of the industry standards lightroom uh, you can watch steven van i know he has tons of fucking uh <laughs> lightroom <laughs> lightroom tutorials photoshop um, yeah it's a it's a good investment because you can literally do photo video and design so you can make cover art you can edit videos you can edit pictures all in like for twenty dollars a month and if you're a student if you're not a student it's like 40 or 30 um something if like you're a student it's 20 or something like that so uh it's a good investment because you get everything for just twenty dollars a month and like for twenty dollars to make yourself look good is like you know that's good <laughs> so i definitely invest in it if you do have the money Dan, one just plugging you a little bit, like one advantage to your tutorials and, uh, you know, any tutorial around a lot of this stuff that seems scary to the artist is a lot of it is just literally do this, do this, click this. And then like a little bit of, you know, like I learned how to do uh, like the um, God, it's not called stream, but where you can like put buildings behind in the body and stuff. I learned that from watching you and you literally just said like, click this, click this, click this now. Yeah. Yeah. So what I have to say about this is like when you're learning how to use something, a program or that sort of stuff, I recommend watching like a beginner guide. So like what each thing does, like each button does, um, you know, the shortcuts, stuff like that. So you have a idea of how the program works. And then from there, you can just watch tutorials on how to do certain things. And then you'll catch up, you, you know, you, you'll, um, you'll learn how to do certain things and it will become easier. You don't have to search up videos and stuff, how to do it later on. Uh, what I did before was I just watched videos. I'd watch a bunch of um, beginner guides, stuff like that. And then I'd learn the program fully, like all what everything does. And then from there, I would watch tutorials on how to do different things in the programs. And that's that's how I sort of learned. Mm -hmm. um, and then now I don't watch as many tutorials because I, off of watching other people's tutorials, I created my own style sort of from the inspiration and other stuff that I've seen. Um, so that's what I recommend, uh, like the fastest way to learn uh, to do something. But there's a bunch of also like Skillshare courses and that sort of stuff. But it isn't necessary because there's a lot of content on YouTube that you can watch. Yeah, and I think that uh, similarly, like you'll eventually, this is like with anything in, in creative arts, you'll get good. You'll be able to just, am I too loud? My bad. No, it's good. It's good. Um, you'll be able to get, uh, like you'll get so good, you can just look at something and know how to do it right like like i even with rappers like i can just listen to a rapper and i can just know how they're writing it you know um so that's kind of the positive for artists as well like if you look at thumbnails in most youtube videos like like one month of basic photoshop training you can make that thumbnail like no problem you know yeah i agree i, I you were talking about how you would kind of know what like how they're writing it you know it's so, so, sort of similar for me when i see somebody um, do something in a video that looks really cool. Uh, I, like I'm able to derive like well, how they created it, stuff like that, because I've done so many things. Like I practice so much that I kind of know what I would be able to, uh, what I could do in order to achieve the same look. Uh, I'm sure it's the same with uh, you and like writing and that sort of stuff. But uh, once you use something 
and you and you, you practice and you just catch up you catch on things and then you you just remember so it's, it's honestly not as hard as you think um like i'm super young like i'm 16 right i started when oh, i was shit. in grade eight i started when i was 13 right i started at 13 i was just watching videos like if a 13 year old can learn this stuff then you can definitely learn it too like i didn't know anything about this stuff i wasn't a computer guy i wasn't that sort of stuff i was literally just a kid um like like playing sports and like that sort of stuff like and then i uh, caught on to this right yeah okay well one last thing i want to say which is a mixture of plug and slash uh good social media so you also like you said you built a following um we want to talk a little bit about how you run your community uh your youtube i assume is is your biggest platform how do you yeah. funnel through i've seen you've done a couple instagram tutorials um just building community as an artist in general maybe not rapper specific but uh any tips you have about that with eighty five thousand subs i mean that's that's a real number right there <laughs> so first of all if you get comments if you get dms like reply because that's how you you know reach people one one-on-one -on -one, right people will come back if if you continue to like you know help them and also provide value like give advice uh if if you actually you know know stuff um if you, if you want to help somebody out like help them out uh when you give value to people like they'll return it right they'll come back to you they'll watch your stuff they'll purchase your stuff they'll purchase your merch they'll watch your videos um and also consistently putting out content because um like for everything if people don't keep seeing you they'll like just forget about you so keep posting instagram stories right because at the top of the instagram homepage, you know the stories that are most recent appear first so if they keep seeing your face they keep seeing your profile picture they'll keep you know they'll, they'll watch your stuff right they'll be more, more likely to watch your stuff if you're putting out videos and stuff like that it's much easier to be discovered off of a bunch of videos than just one video right if you release 10 videos compared to if you release one video they're more likely to watch one of the 10 than watch one of the one right so constantly put out content so that people keep seeing you um and don't be spammy or anything i, I think have a filter to how, how how much you do it but definitely uh if you're like having a youtube channel like try to upload like once a week or on a consistent basis don't upload for one week or upload like two weeks straight and then not upload for a month you know be consistent so people know when they can expect stuff from you um if you're gonna put out like a project like put it out once a year uh don't just put like three projects disappear for three years come back you know like be consistent uh, keep putting out content and interact with your community and also if you can you know collaborate with anybody um do that as well uh like i i used to talk about this there's like the three c's or something like communication so like replying to fans um collaboration and consistency that i think that was the third one but uh, i used to tell myself that a lot so that's kind of how i built my stuff because uh, i have a very niche um sort of but like the content makes very niche right it's like very specific and i built a community like the same people comment on my videos every time uh the same people dm me like they all keep coming back but that, that those amount of people keep growing but i can i know that they keep coming back i keep seeing the same people right so yeah that's my advice dope man oh well i appreciate this very much if you want to uh do the little like shout out follow me swag huh. swag uh yeah. yeah so yeah so uh if you want to check out my work i make tutorials uh if you want to learn anything visual like how, how i edit stuff like that uh steven van on youtube youtube.com slash steven van and for my twitter and instagram if you want to reach me or uh you can email me as well um it's steven van underscore like if you have any questions or anything like that feel free to message me and if you need like a photo video guy and you're in uh the gta the greater toronto area you can hit me up um for any visual stuff like that and yeah um my website is steven dash van.com you can see my portfolio and all that sort of stuff um and my social media is on there as well in case you um didn't hear before but yeah um thanks for having me on and i'm um, happy to help out whenever i can um if you want me on again sometime uh, i'll be happy to do it mm -hmm.